Welcome to the online training for the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program, or IMP. IMP is a program to collect data on monarch butterflies and their habitats across their entire breeding range. The data will be used by a variety of conservation professionals and researchers to advance our understanding of monarchs and their habitats, set conservation objectives, and monitor progress towards them. We're excited to have you join this effort. In this online training video, we'll learn to conduct Activity 2 the Monarch Egg and Larvae Survey. This activity is a survey for monarch eggs and larvae, otherwise known as caterpillars. You will examine milkweed plants in the monitoring plot and count how many monarch eggs and larvae are present. This activity helps us understand monarch density, which is a measurement of the number of monarchs and larvae on a certain number of milkweeds. Researchers will use the data to look at differences among habitats and geographies. We can also better understand the timing of monarch reproduction within a year, between years, and among different sites. By observing the same area repeatedly, we can also learn about the survival of eggs and larvae. We do this all by counting eggs and larvae on each milkweed plant observed. We recommend conducting this activity weekly if you can, but monitoring less frequently is acceptable. Weekly data help us better understand how monarch survival and reproduction progress through the year. Since monarchs follow emerging milkweed north in the spring, they can readily find small milkweed plants as soon as they emerge. So begin monitoring your milkweed as soon as it emerges and continue throughout the growing season. During monitoring, you'll record the following information. The species of milkweed you examine, the number of milkweeds, the number of eggs or larvae that you find, the instar or age of the larvae, and miscellaneous monarchs. We will go over how to record this information shortly. There are four ways that you can locate milkweed plants that you examine within your plot. First, you could monitor all the milkweeds in your plot. For plots where there is too much milkweed to reasonably examine all of the plants, there are three ways that you can examine a subset of them. You could sample along Activity 1 transects if you're conducting that activity. You could sample a random subset of milkweed, or you could sample a systematic subset. We'll go over each of these options in detail. You will only need to examine up to 100 milkweed plants. At that point, you can choose to stop or keep examining more. If there are fewer than 100 plants in the plot, you can stop when you've completed the sampling method that you chose. It's not necessary to continue sampling until 100 milkweeds are examined, as long as you follow the method that you chose. To examine all the milkweeds in your plot, zigzag through the plot and look at every milkweed that you encounter. If you know where a certain milkweed patch is, you can start there, but always meander through the plot to ensure that no milkweed plants are missed. Take care not to examine the same plant twice, and this method is useful where there's patchy or small amounts of milkweed. If you are conducting Activity 1, the Milkweed and Blooming Plant Survey, you can also examine all milkweeds along these transects. As you walk each transect and record data for Activity 1, stop to examine all the milkweeds within a meter of the transect, including those between your subplots. Since you're doing Activity 2 more frequently than Activity 1, some of the time you'll be walking these transects only looking for eggs and larvae and milkweed and not recording Activity 1 data. Another option is to sample a random subset of milkweeds. Walk to an edge of your monitoring plot and select a random direction. You could spin a pencil in the air and walk the direction that it points, or spin a dial, or use a random number or random bearing generator online. Walk in the direction that the pencil points and examine all the milkweeds that you encounter within an arm's reach. When you reach the other side of your plot, select another random bearing and walk in that direction. Continue and feel that, until you feel that you have adequately sampled the area or until you reach 100 milkweeds. Note that if you choose this method, you'll be walking different random transects each time you visit. That's okay. It's not necessary to examine the exact same milkweed plants every time. The random subset method is good for sites with evenly distributed milkweed. The final option is to sample a systematic subset. 
You do this by monitoring a certain proportion of the plants. Estimate the number, the total number of milkweed plants at the site by scanning the area before you begin your survey or by doing a quick area count to get a better estimate. Then divide your estimate by 100. Examine one out of the resulting number as you walk through the plot. For example, if a site has about 300 milkweed plants, divide 300 by 100 to get three. In this case, you'd walk through your plot examining every third plant, or one out of every three plants. This number may change through the season if the amount of milkweed on your plot varies. The systematic subset method can be useful on linear sites, such as roadsides or agricultural edges with lots of milkweed, or other types of plots with patchy milkweed. Make sure to stick to your method while you're conducting the survey. For example, if you're surveying a random transect and then scooch it over a few meters to examine some tall milkweeds, are you missing the small milkweeds that would have been on the original random transect? What would happen to our data if we only examined the tall, healthy, or blooming milkweed that catches our eye? Also, if you see larvae on milkweed outside of your selected subset, record them in the miscellaneous monarch section at the bottom of your data sheet. In Survey123 app, there's a separate form for miscellaneous monarchs. Record them there. These methods keep your sampling unbiased. If the method you chose for the first time didn't seem like a good fit, just pick a different method next time. Here we'll take a few moments to become better monarch observers. Here are some tips to help you locate eggs and larvae. Don't skip plants that appear small or unhealthy. They still have potential to host monarchs. Look carefully at all parts of the plant, including tops and bottoms of leaves, stems, buds, flowers. Also note that some milkweeds may grow many stems, while others consist of only one stem. If it's a multi-stemmed plant, like butterfly weed, examine the whole plant, including all the stems, and record all the monarchs that you find on that one plant. Look for caterpillar clues, such as crescent-shaped chew marks or caterpillar poop, called frass. Of course, do not record a monarch if you don't see one. The larvae may have died or left the plant since those clues were left. Handle the plants carefully. Larvae can fall off plants or may release themselves and drop to the ground if the plant is handed, handled vigorously. Also review the guidance in your guidebook, Appendix F, and watch the Monarch ID training video for more details and images. Let's take a closer look at some clues that larvae may leave. Monarch have a distinctive chewing pattern. Early instars can make transparent windows, as shown on the upper left, as they consume the outer layer of the leaf. As they grow, they start using a distinctive crescent or semicircle pattern, as shown in the other photos. Recent chew marks may still have white latex around the chewed edge. Monarch frass becomes larger as the larvae age. On the upper left, you can see the pinhead-sized frass of a first instar. Fourth and fifth instar frass is larger, nearing the size of a tic tac. Eggs and early instars are very small, but not microscopic. They can be seen with the naked eye, and a hand lens can expedite identification. See the size of the first instars here on the left and the upper right, relative to the size of the leaves in the hand. Also make sure to check all parts of the plant, as they may be using flowers, stems, and buds. Watch here as the observer carefully examines all parts of the milkweed stems on her transect. She's looking at the tops and the bottoms of the leaves, the stems, making sure she doesn't overlook anything. What if you don't see many or any monarchs? That's okay. Data from previous studies show that the most common thing you'll find is milkweed with no monarchs on it. The number of plants that you examine, including all of those without monarchs, is every bit as important as the number of monarchs you find. This all builds a data set that truly reflects when and where monarchs are present. Note also that in some regions, monarchs may have a wave of activity, where you'll find many for a while, then few or none, and then you'll find more again as they progress through multiple generations. Don't worry, you'll find plenty of other wildlife to keep things interesting. 
Now let's review how to record data on your data sheet. We use a paper data sheet example here with some review of the Survey123 app form. Here's an example of the data sheet. Fill out first the data at the top, such as the date, and your start time, your site ID, your name, and any notes that are helpful to you. In the bottom right corner, we're going to see the plants that we examine. First, we come across a common milkweed. So in the upper section, in that gray box next to milkweed species, we write down the name of that species. We wrote common milkweed, and it has no eggs or larvae on it. So I put a tally on the left where we can tally plants with zero monarchs. In your Survey123 app, you would open the form and go to your first milkweed species and then use the drop down menu to type in the common or scientific name, select the appropriate species, and then there's a tab where you can add or subtract number of plants with zero eggs or larvae. So we tally one plant here. Now we continue walking and we come across a common milkweed with a first instar and a third instar. Here we record it in the box shown here with a one and a three. We write down one for first instar and three for third instar. We put all of the larvae that we see, the eggs and larvae that we see from one plant in a single box. The next milkweed plant we come across has a third instar on it. So we go to our next box and we record three. Then we come across another common milkweed with an egg. We write E for egg in the next box. Here's another common milkweed, but it has zero eggs or larvae. So we're going to make another tally in the box on the left. Here's a common milkweed with three second instars, a fifth instar, and an egg. So we go to our next box and write E, 2, 2, 2, and 5 to record every single egg and larvae that we've found on this single plant. Now we come across a new species of milkweed that we haven't seen yet. Here's a poke milkweed and it has a fourth instar on it. So we drop down to our bottom section here and write poke milkweed next to the milkweed species at the top. Then we go to a single box, the first box, and write down number four for one fourth instar. If you're using Survey123, you would tap the bottom right corner arrow to move to your second milkweed species, and then again use the drop down menu to select the appropriate species and write down the instars or the eggs that you've seen. Then we continue on our survey and we come across another poke milkweed, but this has no eggs or larvae on it. So we can tally that in the box on the left. Now we come across another milkweed. This is back to our common milkweed and it has two fifth instars. So we go back up to the top section of our worksheet, write five comma five. The next milkweed is a common milkweed with two eggs and one first instar. So we record egg, egg, and one for first instar. Now we come across another common milkweed plant. This one has an adult monarch on it. But this survey is not for adult monarchs. This survey is for eggs and larvae. So first thing that we do is inspect it for eggs and larvae. We find none. And so we make another tally up under the common milkweed section for a plant with no monarchs on it. Then we want to record our adult butterfly in the miscellaneous monarch section. So down at the bottom of the data sheet, we record one adult monarch that's resting. Then we move on to our next plant and we find another common milkweed. This one has one egg on it. So in the upper section of our data sheet, we write E for egg. That's the last one we found. So we fill in our end time and then fill out the checkboxes on the upper right of the data sheet. Was milkweed observed on the site? Yes, it was. We have this option here in case you intend to do activity two on your site, but find no milkweed there. Did we complete the site description for today? Yes, we did. That's required every time we go out to make sure that we properly record any new management that happened. And then we can fill in the number of pages that we have. So let's practice. 
Here you'll practice monitoring a plot. You will need a copy of Activity 2 data sheet or the Survey 123 form on your mobile device. In the plot, you'll find poke milkweed and common milkweed. Your method of sampling is to monitor all the milkweeds in the plot, so you'll zigzag your way through the plot until each milkweed is examined. Here's your plot. Numbers and letters indicate eggs or larval instars. There's a key at the bottom. Press pause to give yourself as much time as you need. This slide will advance to an answer key in a few seconds. Compare your data sheet to this answer key. The order of milkweed data does not matter. Each of you may have selected a different path to walk through the plot, but we'll end up with the same data no matter what the order. Did you make sure to record only the milkweed that was in your plot and not those growing outside of it? Also remember that when you find multiples of the same instar on a plant, write that instar number multiple times, like the common milkweed shown here with two first instars and a fourth. Do not write two firsts comma fourth, two firsts comma fourth like this, as that may be mistaken later for a second instar and a first instar. Thank you for watching this section of the Integrated Monarch Monitoring Program online training. You can find all the training materials at the website shown here or may contact Monarch Joint Venture staff with specific questions at the email address listed below. Thank you and happy monitoring.